What's good in the hood, people? What is good in the hood? Hopefully everyone is doing it very, very well. Um, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to press that subscribe button. Uh, don't forget to like and share the vids as well. It really, really helps the channel. I didn't realize how much it actually helped the channel, but it really does. So please don't forget to like and share. Um, I'm just trying to find something before we talk boxing. I did, um, if you guys remember yesterday and I think the day before, I said, um, if you are a small business and you want a little push uh, via my channel, uh, send an email with a bit about your business and I will happily push you. Um, for free, obviously, um, no charge whatsoever. Um, I've been sent a couple, but I did ask if you could send a, like, a screenshot of your business and um, Joseph Ellis has done that. Let's have a quick look at Joseph Ellis's business. Um, okay, he's a plastering company. He sent me a couple of screenshots here. Uh, Transform Plastering Services. So if you guys are in need of a plasterer, guys or girls, um, give them a call, man. Give them a call. You know, what's the worst that can happen? Uh, they've got some good photos of the work they've done. Some very good shit. I mean, I needed you like a month ago in my bathroom. Um, but yeah, give them a call. Uh, check them out. I've got some photos here. Um, and what's the worst? Like, what's the worst that can happen, right? You give them a call. You work at a price. If it's good, you book them. If it's not, you don't book them. Simple. But give them a call. Transform Plastering Services. Um, and again, the contact details are below. Again, if you guys want to shout out, um, again, send over an email um, and I will happily shout you out on the video. Like this isn't the only video I'm going to shout out Transform Plastering Services. I'm going to shout them out a couple more times as well. Just so, fingers crossed, um, you can get some calls from people that watch this channel. All right, let's... Um, Let's talk boxing. Before we do that, let's get the amber nectar in the system. <sighs> Worst hay fever in the world. Uh, late, well, not even late last night, early this morning. Don't know what happened. I came back from TalkSport and I was like sneezing all over the place. Um, it's not the corona. It's just hay fever. I've taken a tablet and I do feel a bit better. Um, did you guys see that picture of AJ and Tyson Fury just randomly meeting in um, Marbella. Um, I think it was Marbella. How big did AJ look? For I actually didn't even think it was AJ. I thought it was Tyson Fury talking to an AJ lookalike or, or some sort of security guard. I didn't understand it. Then I looked and I'm like, I thought, my God, it's AJ. He looked massive. Obviously, there are angles to a photo because I've actually seen video footage of AJ in Marbella and he doesn't look anything like that size. But he looked huge. He looked, he looked really, really big. He looked around 18 stone, maybe a bit more. Um, maybe a bit more, you know. I wouldn't be, looking at that photo, I wouldn't be shocked if he's touching the 19 stone mark. I wouldn't be shocked, which is crazy, especially when you consider how light he came in for Andy Ruiz. The big boy, isn't he? He's a big boy. It's funny, uh, underneath the photo, everyone's like, oh, predictions, predictions, predictions. I don't know. Just let, let's see if it can happen. I mean, both of them, I think, said something like 2021, or at least Tyson Fury said 2021. Boxing needs that fight. Um, I do think, like, I feel like boxing's in the dumps right now. Not bad, bad. I mean, flipping out, I mean, I remember the Frank Warren days over here. They were shocking. So it ain't bad, bad, but... Um, it's not great right now. It's not. And obviously, I always make the comparison to UFC or MMA. I don't know why I do that. I don't need to do that, but I do it just to, I don't know, just to piss me off, I think. <laughs> um, and obviously, compared to what the UFC is doing right now, boxing does look like it's really behind. But um, the, the thing about boxing is that there are great fights to make. Like, it could blow MMA out of the water. Blow it out of the water right now. Like, honestly, if it put on... Like five or six fights right now, they're just massive fights, but those fights ain't going to happen. That's the issue. Or well, not now anyway, but we'll see. I have hope that it will happen. Um, UK Prime Minister, stadium audiences, audiences sorry, back from October. Yeah, they are going to um, do small trials uh, next month, I know. Um, and now they're talking about smaller numbers, not crazy numbers, but smaller numbers with some sort of segregation, which is going to be difficult. Um, in October. It's just not going to work. You might as well, if you're going to do it, just do it. 
right? If you're going to do it, just do it. Especially in football. Like, can you imagine if it's back in football and you segregate the seats, but then a team scores? You know, where it's, you're going to get everyone to still, like, sit down and, like, not move. Obviously, they're going to get up, jump, and mix with each other. So I don't know. Uh, what do you do? COVID testing at the entrance? If you're going to do it, just do it. Um, because it's going to be crazy. But this is good for boxing, especially for those fights that... Those big fights, right? I mean, we're, we're hearing about Usyk, Chisora. Like, what, what's going to happen with that? It's not going to happen behind closed doors. Well, it looks like it could happen from October. So that's a good thing. AJ Pulev as well. All the big fights over here. Uh, we know that... Um, Daniel Dubois, Joe Joyce is scheduled for October. That will have a crowd now. So, I mean, this is good news. This is really good news. Um, it's a strange time right now because, like, the parts of America opening up, right? And now it's closing down again. Um, because, again, I hate to bring up the UFC, but I know a bit about what's going on over there. They were supposed to have events in Vegas. Um, Holly Holm, a UFC fighter, was supposed to fight August 2nd. Yeah, August 2nd. So Darren Till's fight is coming up this weekend. Holly Holm was supposed to fight next weekend. Dana White is actually considering flying all those people to Fight Island. So don't know what's ha going to happen. So it's good to hear that the UK is opening up for um, crowds because we need it. We need it desperately, especially for those fights again. A lot of the um, sort of mid to high tier fighters haven't fought, and I'm guessing they've not fought because um, of um, not being not being offered the money because of no ticket sales. Um, so it'd be good to see a lot of these guys back, especially Kelbrook, especially Kelbrook. All right, what else have we got here? Um, Manuel Char continues to bait Andrew Ruiz. Accept my challenge. Don't hide. Manuel Char, just go. Exit door. Find it. Um. Michael Hunter, Tyson Fury knows I got one over him in the amateurs. Um, I like Michael Hunter, but I can't stand this type of stuff. I, I really can't. So what? So what? You beat, you got one over him on the amateurs. Even though I think on record, Tyson Fury won that fight, but Michael Hunter is saying he won that fight. And I think a lot of people are saying he won the fight as well, but so what? One is the ring recognized number one WBC champion, lineal champion. One isn't. That's all that matters. That's all that matters, man. It's just, yeah. I, I'm, I'm starting to really hate these amateur stories and sparring stuff. I can't stand them. Like, show me your record in the pros and what you've done in the pros. I don't want to hear about what you've done as an amateur, unless it's Loma, right? Or Rigondo or Renus, that kind of level as an amateur. And don't tell me about sparring. That really is starting to annoy me. Oh, Dillian White knocked down Tyson Fury in sparring. Who cares? Who cares? I mean, I remember there was so much build-up about Chris Eubank Jr. hurting George Groves in sparring. So? And I remember even the first fight, Carl Froch same, doing the same thing to George Groves and then he got put on his ass. It means very, very little. Very, very little. All right, um, Canelo Eubank Jr. could be the right opportunity for both, says Barry McGuigan. Uh, it's a good fight, right? It's a good fight. Action-packed. Um, I mean, he's way above some of the names that we're hearing, right? I'd rather have him than David Lemieux. I'd rather, even though David Lemieux's probably got a better resume, I'd still rather have Chris Eubank Jr. than David Lemieux. Maybe that's just from a British standpoint, I don't know, but way more than John Ryder, way more than Quigley. More than Callum Smith? Don't know. Kind of both. Or, to me, Billy Joe Saunders, Callum Smith, Chris Eubank Jr. are all in the same boat in terms of what I'd like to see. Um, I, I'm actually, I hate this Canelo situation. I re, I'm about to rant. I'm about to rant. Let me have some coffee before I rant. I hate the idea that boxers can pick and choose who they fight. I can't effing stand it I'm trying not to swear I can't stand it I really hate it um, it should almost it should almost be taken away from them it shouldn't be their choice like why are you getting to choose who you fight I just can't stand it and I think that's the biggest problem with boxing right now that's one of the biggest problems I know a lot of people talk about the belts and um, these fights where uh, different 
Um, almost different TV networks, fighters can't fight each other. I get all that. But fighters being able to kind of, oh, yeah, I want to fight him, just annoys me. There, there should be an, an order and it should be followed, right? You, you fight the next guy up. That, that's how it should be. That should, there, should, there needs to be a universal ranking system. I forget all the sanction, boys. A universal ranking system. Canelo fights number two, beats number two, the ne number three st steps up. Canelo f That's how it should be. That's how it should be. Like the idea of just plucking people, like Mayweather did that, and it just annoys me. It really does. If I'm the zone and I'm paying you 30 plus million, even though it might be a slight pay cut this time around, if I'm paying you that kind of money, I'm sorry, I'm picking who the fuck you're fighting. I just swore. I'm picking who you're fighting. I'm pick, you, you don't have a choice. You're fighting him. If I'm paying you, that, you're fighting him. Not you deciding, oh yeah, yeah, give, give me him. No, no, that's the person you're fighting. Don't want to hear it. Like right now, really and truly, he should be fighting Charlo. That's who he should be fighting. Your franchise champion, Charlo is the normal champion. I'm about to say regular, but he's not even regular. He's the, he's the normal, he's the real champion. That's who you should be fighting. This is just, just disgraceful. Like, if, if Canelo, and it's, look, I'm not trying to dig Canelo because his resume says I can't really dig him because he does fight the fights. But if Canelo honestly fights John Ryder or Jason Cr it, if if he fights those two, then I'm sorry, no. Mm -mm. When there are so many fighters at 160 or 168, so many, um, I just, I just, I feel like boxing, it's, it's wrong somewhere. Like, that, that's just wrong, isn't it? Like, you can just, oh, I just want to fight him. No, it shouldn't work like that. It shouldn't. That's, again, I know guys, you're going to say, Eddie, stop talking UFC. That's why I like it sometimes. Dana White says, you're fucking fighting him. Swore again. But Dana White says that. Hence why the likes of Conor McGregor right now are sulking and of, oh, I'm retiring. <laughs> It's not because of money, because he gets paid the buck. Because he wants to fight certain fighters, and Dana White's like, well, no. No. Like, Conor McGregor wants to come back, just to give you guys a bit of um, knowledge about this, and you guys all know anyway. Wants to fight Khabib Namagamadov. That's what he wants to fight. And Dana White's like, no, no, no. Justin Gaethje, who beat Tony Ferguson, is fighting Khabib. You wait in line. That's, that's, that's how it should be. Number one, Khabib fights the next man up, which is Justin Gaethje. It was Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson lost to Justin Gaethje. Justin Gaethje, you go up. That's how it should be. Boxing is just... Like, how can Canelo, pound for pound, numero uno right now, how can he even mention... How can he even, how can he even come out of his mouth that he'll fight Jason Quigley? Or, no, sorry, it's not even come out of his mouth, but how can his team even be mentioning Jason Quigley? How? Is that his name? I feel like I've got his name wrong. It's Jason Quigley, isn't it? Let's have a quick look before I just edit this out completely. Please, yeah, Jason Quigley. How, how that, no, <laughs> that's not how it works. Well, it is how it works, and that's the problem with boxing. Um, he should be fighting Jamal Charlo right now. That's the fight that should be happening. That's the fight, but now they've elevated him to franchise champion. He obviously doesn't have to do his mandatories, and it's just a crap, crap way that boxing handles its business, crap. Um, the zone should be saying you fight him, or his promoter should be saying you. you ha that's it. You have to fight him. But um, no, and it's not just him. There's other boxers that's got to the stage as well where they're like starting to pick who they want to fight, and it's just next man up. That's how it should be. Next man up. Anyway, oh, where are we? Um, Chocolatito to Estrada. I want to receive what I'm worth. Oh, here we go. Money talk. Money, money, money. Um, to be fair, Chocolatito deserves every penny. That's such a great fight. That is such a great fight. Like, if you... If you want to know about boxing, like, if... You know, obviously, we all are attracted to the heavyweights. And sometimes, unless your name's Tyson Fury... Ortiz or Usyk, you don't really see a skillful heavyweight. If you just want to see two guys at the peak of 
skill and intelligence and ring IQ, go and watch Chocolatito versus Estrada. Just go and watch it. Go and watch it. Really, honestly, I can't recommend it enough. All right, what we got here? Um, Agate Cabiel beats up decisions a game. Egg Venice, Lazaridis, welcome back, Agate Cabiel. Um, this was interesting. Gilberto Ramirez, a free agent, amicably splits with top rank. Um, I was wondering why he hasn't fought for so long. Obviously, he was going through this, sitting it out. Um, it's a shame. He's unbeaten, you know. Gilberto Ramirez, well, how many, what's his record? Let's have a quick look. Um, I think it's something like 44. I think he's got a draw in there. Let's have a look. How old is he now? 29, okay. 40 and 0. No one talks about him though, do they? 40 and 0. 26 knockouts. Um, how, how many? How long did he defend that belt for? So he beat Arthur Abraham, I remember it. So he had one, two, three, four, five, six defences against decent opposition. Um, sorry, five defences against decent opposition. Now he's moved up to light heavyweight. Um, I wonder if Matram will take a look at him. I wonder. Who have Matchroom got as light heavy? Well, they've got some names, but obviously they don't want to put those guys against what they've got. Um, it's not like he's going to struggle to get a contract with someone, but, I mean, top rank probably, I don't know, saw no interest in him. Um, Bob Arum stopped speaking about this guy two years ago. It's a shame. It's a shame. Decent fighter. Decent fighter. All right, what else we got? Um, I saw something here. Uh, Lucas Brown, I'm focused on Davtiev. I'd love to fight David Price in the UK. Um, why not? Why not? I was about to say who wants to see it, but I'd see it. <laughs> I'd watch it. So would you. You'd watch it as well. Yes, you would. Not every fight can be, you know, elite versus elite. Sometimes you just want to see a barroom brawl. Am I right? Sometimes you want to see a barroom brawl. And David Price versus Lucas Brown would be a barroom brawl. I think Tom Little won the Lucas Brown fight. I don't know what happened there, but I'll tune in for it. Um, let's see what Lucas Brown can do against um, Davtiev first. Um, anything else on here? This might be a quick one. <laughs> Ade. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't think there's much else to talk about. There's the usual... Boring stuff, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. That might be a quick video. I'm not sure how long this is, but you know what? I've done a video. It's about consistency. Up the reds.